Ladies and gentlemen, I am back with another edition, a special edition, if you were, of the Quarantine Conversations. I am joined today by none other than the great Bobby Yan, six-time Emmy Award winner. Uh, this brother is a director, he's a producer, he's a creator of just wonderful film. If you haven't seen it, please go to his IMDB or to his website and look him up. And we'll get to that information at the end of the conversation. Bobby, what is good, brother? How are you? Uh, I'm as well as I can be. And um, it's good to be here. And so thanks a lot for having me here. I appreciate it. So Indeed, indeed, brother. This has been a long time coming. Um, we've uh, interacted with one another online, uh, social media. You follow some of our pages. Um, and you've always given us a shout out. Um, you acknowledge our work and, and I appreciate that. And, and, and the same goes for us. We have watched you uh, over the years, uh, the many, many projects you've worked on. We have, uh, I personally have enjoyed. Um, and so I, I just want to get into uh, the basics right quick. How are you doing during this quarantine, given that you are so uber creative and that you have so much going on all the time? How is it right now that you've uh, sort of been isolated in quarantine? Um, it's it's uh, mostly positive. I think I can, I can look at both sides. Um, you know, I'm definitely very, very saddened by what's been going on. Um, a lot of my friends uh, have lost family members as well as friends themselves. So my prayers go out to everybody that's been affected by this. Um, on the flip side, I know for myself, this last month, <clears throat> I've been home uh, with my mother taking care of her. So we're basically quarantining ourselves together as a, as a unit. So I think that's something to be said about a healing time for family, uh, a way to go inward you know, both, both pers personally as well as spiritually. Um, so I think that's something that I've been attempting to be doing as, as much as I can, although I realize I probably should be doing a little bit more. Uh, you know, I haven't really been meditating the way I really wanted to, but I figured this would be a time to start doing that, to be more in touch with your, with your spiritual. Uh, aside from that, there's a positive side to this as a creator. I think this is many of my, of my associates and friends have told me they have these great ideas. You know, I have a TV show idea, I have a film idea have a short film idea. Well, you know what, this is the time that you have right now where perhaps it's a blessing in disguise where you can actually do that. You know, and, and as far as myself, that is what I've been doing as well. I've decided to stay really positive and focused as much as I can be. Although I, the, on the flip side, I have been finding myself to be inwardly, you know, as well as quarantining myself, slightly antisocial. I haven't been as active on social media. This is the time that I needed to, to heal and I think this is the time that we need to reevaluate not just ourselves, but also our country and this world. And where do we want to see this world in the next 20, 30, 50 years for our, for our ancestors, for our descendants, everybody? That's a good point. Um, there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of confusion going around. And that confusion is causing anxiety uh, and, and distress among citizens. Can you give me some insight as to how some of the misinformation has been affecting you, per se? Are you aware of it? Uh, is it penetrating your inner circle? And if so, how are you dealing with it? Um, well, I'm, I'm staying right now and I live in Flushing, Flushing, Queens, which is uh, very close to Bayside uh, in New York. If you don't know the boroughs, I'm sure you do. Yes. But for those who don't know, um, I believe Bayside has probably in New York City, Bayside has been hit the strongest. So in many ways, this is kind of the epicenter of um, where this virus has hit the most. And I, I would include probably Flushing uh, as well. This is a very Asian, an Asian, uh, Asian area, predominantly uh, Chinese and Korean over here. Um, so I think there, there are, is a lot of misinformation um, conspiracy theories I've, I've seen, but I think that the one thing that is clear and is most important is that this, this uh, virus is affecting people. People are getting sick, you know, they are dying. So this is not, so, so whether you, you want to say it's from one thing or another, 
um, it is always smart to just be careful. So for me and myself and my, my family, you know, I'm definitely not going out at all as, as, as little as possible. And um, I am being very careful to wear a mask and wear gloves. And I've actually been very anti-mask over the years. Uh, I used to get upset at Asians when I saw them with masks, but then I actually realized that ever since the SARS virus, I kind of had to uh, kind of teach myself and say, okay, these people are, when I say these people, I mean Asians from other countries, right? Um, they believe that wearing the mask is, is doing a service to the community because they are trying to just keep things safe. It's courtesy for them in other countries. So I just find it very ironic now that I have a mask myself and I have to do the same. And it is a lesson for me to teach myself like, okay, other cultures have reasons for what they're doing. We must understand that, you know? So yeah, so right now you know, I am being careful. I'm barely going out unless I really need to. And I really think that that's what we really need to do. You know, I know, I know when the thing just started back in March, people were still partying and traveling. And um, myself, I just got back. I literally got back from LA like a day or two before this quarantine started. I got back just in time. Mm. So, and I was in a rush to get back because I, I had a feeling that something like this was going to happen. I've seen you make some very strong comments about, um, you know, the backlash that's taking place in the Asian community right now. Can you speak a little bit about that? And then also on the flip side about what's going on in Asian countries as it re relates to African Americans or just African descendants in general? Well, I don't think this is something that is, um, that is new. I think, I believe this is something that has been there for many, many years. And I think that it's a, it's a shame, number one, and I'm very, 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 very uh, criti critical of China, as well as Asian, Asian people in general, and that includes all other Asians, uh, Indians, Japanese, Koreans, uh, you name it, that have a color, color issues, still do. And we still have issues where we look at dominant, the dominant society of the world, which is, you know, Caucasians and other European European people, they see that and they have slanted views of, of what's good and what's bad, where Africans are bad. And I think it's something that needs to be healed internally and messages need to be brought that we are all the same. And this is something that as a, as a creator, proud Asian American, as a roots America, who has strong ties with other communities, such as African Americans and Latinos, that we have a responsibility to teach each other the truth, which means to study history, to study that Historically, Asian and African countries have been friends, and we need to see each other as allies. And I also include Europeans need to be allies with us to just eliminate hate, which meant lies, uh, fake, fake viewpoints and stereotypes that desensitize, desensitize human beings. So yeah, I think it's really bad. I'm very, very upset at China, how they treat Africans. This is ridiculous. So, and I was just telling, Telling my friend, I was like, look, when I have to say, when somebody knows who I am as a filmmaker and they listen to me, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it as loud as I can. I will go to China and tell those leaders, you're wrong. Change people. But the best I think I can do it uh, is through through the media, creating, creating projects, creating content that hits the heart of people, that teaches people, even if discreetly through the stories we tell. We find ways to put the messages of hope in our work. And that is something that is intrinsically part of who I am as a filmmaker and why I'm a filmmaker, you know, because deep inside I'm, a, I'm an activist. I've always been an activist. So I decided to take my activism, my social beliefs and put it into my work. And it shows. Um, one of the things that I love about the work you've done in the past is that it incorporates the hip hop culture. Um, I'm, you know, I'm a 50 year old guy, so I come from you know, yep. the, the original active uh, conscious hip hop era, you know, Chuck D, Public Enemy, KRS-One. And um, I noticed that you tend to interweave, intertwine those themes in some of your movies. Can you talk a little bit about how, you, how you've been able to do that over the years and, and the purpose behind it? I literally saw hip hop grow before my eyes. I was a kid, but I saw it. I'm sure just as yourself. Right. 
So it's besides being part of who I am, um, and as an Asian that was integrated very early into that culture, um, it's it's within my bloodline in terms of my thoughts, my my dress, my swag. is It's natural. This is who I am. I understand the meaning of it, how powerful it is as uh, it's, it was a um, protest, protest music in the beginning, you know, very, very proudly for Latinos and, and, and African-Americans in, in New York City originally to basically proclaim who they are as against the other type of musics. But then it became so big and popular that all around the world is listening to it. Me understanding this, um, I choose to use that as a tool and also as a way of expressing myself. It comes naturally within the way I express myself, but I also understand this is how you're going to reach, uh, reach the, the masses, especially the youth. You need it to, to understand it. If you understand it, you know how to use it properly and use it intelligently and with the right intent. You know, not to um, bastardize, bastardize it, not to take advantage of it, um, I think what, what I do is try to use the true intent of good when I put, you know, hip hop into what I do. So I already worked at, you know, well over a hundred music videos. Uh, most of them have been hip hop music videos. So I know the culture very well. I grew up with uh, uh, knowing personally so many rappers back in the day. Um, now you did, you, did over, you did over a hundred music videos in your career, what was one of the favorites that you've ever had to work with? Um, I'll say this, uh, when I was 17 years old, and this is a, a big part of who I am, I went to school in New Orleans, New Orleans, Louisiana. It was a, it was a leap of faith. Uh, circumstances all came very um, spiritually as to why I chose uh, Tulane University in New Orleans, shout out to Tulane. Um, but the city of New Orleans, which is a predominantly black city, was full of culture. This is back in 1991. This is a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And back when I was there, this is before, before um, cash money, before uh, it was the beginning of No Limit, actually before No Limit. Um, it was an amazing time. It was an amazing time to be in New Orleans to see the growth of so much music. Um, so I think if I was to talk about maybe not the work itself, but the experience I had with hip hop was, was, was one of a lifetime, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, my history is I started when I went to school in New Orleans, I started working at the TV station. And, um, when I was there, there was, there was a, a student run TV station. And literally that is how I learned filmmaking as well as editing mm -hmm. and producing it was student run. It was a bunch of really, really passionate kids. Um, some of whom are still doing it. One of my friends, Eric, he works, he's a producer for 2020. Um, but there was there, we had TV shows. We did our own TV shows. So some of the earlier students there had created a show called Hip Hop Half Hour. And it was a, a local um, hip hop music video show. So me growing up, who, who shout out to Ralph Manuels, I grew up watching the music. I basically took, took the influence of what Video Music Box did for me as a kid. And I put it, when I took over the show, Eventually, I took that and I put it toward um, my show, uh, Top Half Hour, which aired in New Orleans. And it actually aired prime time at 9 p.m. on Channel 6 on cable. The whole city watched it. So what I did was we sh programmed in mostly East Coast music. And we pumped that music for years. I, was, I did that show for seven years with my, uh, my best friend, Jamal Payne. And that show became the number one show in New Orleans. And it was so powerful that we had every single rapper that ever came to New Orleans would stop by our show. And we're talking about from uh, Biggie Smalls to Jay-Z to Eminem. We had all of them on our show. It was a pretty wonderful time. And the show became so popular um, and it, it helped influence a lot of the local New Orleans artists. Um, including Wayne, who was 12 years old when he started watching our show, he would call in every week. It would be Little Wayne giving shout outs to Cash Money and different people. So I, I, I say this to say that I understood the power, the power of hip hop and its influence on helping, you know, positively uh, uh, people from the community. And I felt like that's something that was a, an amazing experience to have a show that actually really, really touched the community in a different way 
and um, it, it, it helped me grow up as well, you know, and thus, mm-hmm. you know, the first music video I ever worked on was Master P. Back in, I just graduated and my friend asked me to help him with the video and I worked on the video with Master P. So it was, it was definitely growth for me. It, it taught me who I am. Um, being in New Orleans and the culture and the, and the spirit of that town really helped uh, me understand who I am being a kid from New York City. You know, it was culture shock, but it was a good culture shock. Right on, right on. I appreciate you telling that story too. And it reminds me of some of my interns right now who are about to graduate from high school and go into college, who have pursuits of wanting to be filmmakers, you know, and, and, and be the next Bobby Yan and so on and so forth. And what advice can you tell them during these unsure times where, where proms are being canceled, graduations are being canceled, SATs are being canceled, bro? What can you offer to these young people about stick to and grassroots effort to keep them on path and track? Um, I, I can only imagine how hard it is right now for these kids. Um, you know, I'm not, in, I'm not actually in their shoes. So you know, the best thing that I can say is uh, besides having your fun and your video games, which I do as well, um, stay focused. Have a, ha, take the time to start thinking about what you like. I think the biggest difference that we didn't have, you and I didn't have growing up is we didn't have the internet. You know, our phones had mm-hmm. access to every single bit of information. We can, we can change the world as kids I see on TikTok or doing or Instagram. We can change the world just through a message that can hit people, you know. Um, and I'm not the biggest on social media myself, but I see the power of it. I understand the power of it. So with that, it also comes with knowledge, you know, for the creative kids, the, the high school want to be at your fingertips um, from access to just watching, watching films that can teach you to reading articles, books, to studying other people's scripts, to studying how to write a pilot. Perhaps this is the time to start doing that. And I'll say this one thing that affected me just recently. Um, as you know, the last two days I've been, feverishly that's why we had to delay this i've been writing a pitch mm. so i've been writing this pitch and i li- it's a pitch for a, a, a feature horror film right that a friend of mine tim uh, it's his idea so we decided to come together and do it and i had an opportunity to pitch it to a major company so i said okay you know we've had this idea for a while let me put together this pitch i'll put together a synopsis a log line and i'll put and i'll send it out and see what it is so as i was doing it i had about maybe three or four days to really finalize it. I worked feverishly, night and day, very little sleep, and I got done. And I ended up writing 20 pages of a complete this feature. It's almost like writing the script. Like I basically wrote down the whole story from beginning to end, 20 pages, right? And that, which is actually how I do films anyway. Whenever I do a, a feature film, I write, I've written two before. I write down outline and usually they're around 20 something pages. Sometimes it could be more, but I did that within a three to four day period. It was like complete brainstorm, complete passion. And also a little bit of, des- of desperation because I knew the time was running out because I had promised the company that I was going to send it to them. Right. But what I did, what I realized about this, is that energy that I put in, what if I worked like that all the time? What if I just didn't work like that right before deadline? Like I remember in school, I used to, cram for a test or write an essay the day before it was was, and i worked at my best and what if we actually took a piece of that energy and worked like that all the time and i was talking to my other friend uh sky washington and we were laughing today well you'd be perry and we were laughing about that but then (laughs) you perry or not and i and i respect him greatly he's from new orleans is he would not be Sorry, this is my cat. He would not be who he is. He would not be this multimillionaire mogul if he didn't have that intense dedication to his craft, right? So that's something to be said, something to be respected. I feel like I had a, a taste of that the last few days. And I said to myself, I need to take this energy and put it to my daily, my daily life, you know? So this, and what better time to do that than during this, uh, crazy time with this coronavirus. We have the time. Let's use it properly. That's what I would say to creators, young and old. That's brilliant advice. And 
it is uh, something that I know I'm living right now. Um, you just confirmed it that uh, you're living it. And those of us who want to come out of this virus quarantine on the other side of it with something positive to show for it and not just be a part of the negative um, mill that has been uh, forced down our throats, essentially. Um, you've confirmed that hard work and consistency is what will pay off in the end. That's a uh, great advice for anyone um, who is unsure about themselves at this time. So I appreciate you sharing that. You know, I know you've got a lot to do and a lot going on, but if you could just say one thing to that individual who is still trying to um, make sense of all of this in this time frame, and you sort of just touched on it, but I want you to sort of sum it up for the broader audience at large. What, what are you, your personal steps that you take on a daily basis now that you said, you know, for the last three days, you work your tail off, but what are some of the personal steps to getting to that level? You know, cause some people just can't just jump in and go, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I understand. Yeah. How do we get to yeah, that I, point? I, I, you know? Yeah, I totally understand. Um, more, more than, more than being a director, I'm a creative and I know so many creative people like myself that have something to say. They have something to say. And some of them have these great ideas and they, they don't know how to say it. You know, and truth be told, some of them don't even know how to write a script. And, and I totally understand it. You know, I, I wrote, wrote my last two feature scripts, not because I want to be a writer necessarily, but it's because it was the only way to get it out of my head. We need to help each other. You know, even if you can't write, you can write down thoughts. So, you know, I've offered that to a few of my friends that they have great ideas. I said, well, you know what, put your ideas down. You know, let's see what we can do with this. I'll help you, I'll help you strategize this and put it together and, and, and make a pitch and maybe help you create an outline. We need to help each other. And for those that may feel that they don't know what they're doing, then you need to reach out. Reach out to some of the people that you that you like and care about. Ask to be mentored. They may not have the time, but you can stay on their radar. You know, I've done the same. I've done the same with people. All I can do is just be in there. They're not necessarily checking for me right now, but at least I'm on their radar, you know. But more importantly, again, as I stated again, I'm trying to be succinct, but I'm not the best at it, is let's help each other. Use, use each other. And also, again, do the research. If you don't know how to do something, you can Google it right now. You can Google it and read up on it. And there's probably an article on everything that you want to know. It will probably tell you step-by-step step how you how to do it. That is such a beauty. It's like a encyclopedia of the world right at your phone, at your fingertips. Again, we didn't have that growing up, but now we do. So these kids, that's the one thing I'll say this. If this was like 30 years ago and these kids are in a quarantine like this, I can imagine how tough that would be but right now. It's a little bit different, just a little bit. I would only imagine, I can only imagine that since they don't have, these kids don't have that frame of reference. I do. I say this, don't take it for granted. But just imagine if you didn't have your cell phone and the web, what would you do right now? You know, you'd have to be going to the library to read books, which is not something bad either. We should probably be doing that too. But still, I say this, we have to, as a film community, just like yourself and how we know each other through social media, but also the fact that we are probably connected intimately by 20 people that we know. We are a film, film community that can support each other, you know, and we can help each other. Um, uh, what's the word? Workshop our ideas, uh, hmm. workshop our scripts. I know I send my scripts out to a whole bunch of my close friends and ask for criticism and ideas and I get notes and I work on those notes and I'm actually very critical of notes. I, I take notes as a blessing. You give me a note or a criticism, I will work on it and I'm going to make it better. It's, it's, it makes me a better person. I'm not one of those people that won't take ideas from other people. I'm a very much a team oriented leader. You know, I am a leader, but I'm also very team oriented. So I say that be your own leader and work with the people at the same time to get your ideas done. If you are creative during this time. 
It's fantastic uh, commentary. I, I love everything that you've said, and it goes right along with uh, some of the great people that I've talked to before this. As I mentioned, this is the 20th time that I've done this conversation, and essentially I did well, I'm, it I'm, I'm honored to be part of, your, part of your 20. Thank you for that. Bro, you have no idea. This means so much to me because over the years, again, we've been We've encountered one another and interacted with each other, never in person, but always through technology. And this idea, this format came about as a forced uh, means to reach out to friends and loved ones who were being impacted and, and affected by the, by the quarantine, about, uh, personally by this COVID uh, onslaught. I personally have known several people who have either been sick or died in the last month. In, in the last 30 days, people have died that have been close to me. So the, it, the game has changed. And so technology is our means to commit, to, to reach out, to communicate to one another, to uplift, to build, and to continue the process of creativity in a new method, the way that we were doing it before, you know, Michael Pickney, Boogie Vision Pickney, said to me last week, he said, you know, Lamar, it's time. Shout, this, out, shout out to Boogie. <laughs> that's right, shout out to Boogie, is that this period in time is forcing us as filmmakers to reevaluate everything that we knew to be true before and look to the future to see how we can do things better. Because it's never going to be the same. It's never going to be the same as it was, uh, you know, a month ago. So with that being said, this technology is bringing us together. And by us having these small bits of conversation that we can share with other people, other people will learn and see what makes us tick and what strength we have developed within our hearts. And also this, the weaknesses that we share, because we all share similar weaknesses fears and and you know so that's part of my reason for putting these conversations together and i just uh, i appreciate you so much taking the time out of your schedule to join me today and one thing i forgot to mention to you and shout out to um the uh disney directors program that you are in uh my boy uh, pete chapman went through that program as well um and Pete, if you know Pete, is now working, you know, with Blackish and uh, Grown Ish. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just I'll say this. Thanks for that. But uh, Pete, Pete has been a very close, uh, dear friend. Uh, he was actually one of the few people that I reached out to as soon as I found out I was uh, in the running for it, and he helped. Mm -hmm. He actually helped me, um, prepared me for my interview for that. So shout out to Pete, definitely. Yeah. Um, if anybody hasn't seen. Uh, you know, Loreen's got a boogie, Mars, Mars is dope. Um, you can go to see those on Seed and Spark, I think, they're, they're being shown there. I haven't updated my website in ages. I'm probably going to open my website with the links to, um, they might be on there, but to the links to exactly where you can see those films. Um, yeah, those, I know those uh, films Mars is available about. on Seed and Spark. I do have, a, I do have a film, though, um, that is out in full. Um, it's called The Adulterer. Um, mm -hmm. It's on uh, YouTube, actually. Um, the, the writer, creator, decided to just put it out. On, uh, it's called The Adult Brewer. It's like, uh, it's almost 30 minutes long. So, and um, I'm pretty proud of it. It's uh, all shot in New Orleans, all local, local New Orleans actors and uh, crew. So it was fun. Super. So check it out. Make sure you follow Mr. Bobby Yan at bobbyyan.com. Um, research those movies that he's made. They're brilliant. And, uh, you know, once again, I'm Lamar Maxson, the Queen City Film Festival and Nonstop Show Group. You can find both of those organizations on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The Queen City Film Festival is coming back in October. Uh, if we don't have a physical event due to COVID restrictions, we will definitely be online. And you can learn more about that at www.qcffnj.com. Mr. Bobby Yan, thank you so much, my brother. I appreciate you. And we thank get, you. We, you're welcome. We're going to get together in 2020 and make it happen, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. Appreciate you. Peace out.